So good luck to you. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for the invitation. I waited all day to, uh, to be here with you because this morning I, I had this exciting realization that there is no place that I'd rather be than here with you today. You as the most outstanding professionals in the industry to make this world a better place. Um, we live in interesting times. And in China, it's a curse to tell someone, may you live in interesting times? Uh, because, you know, violence, poverty, desertification, alienation seem to be boiling up around us and you could see this as a huge threat but I like to see it as a huge opportunity as well to give the world our power, the power of creativity. And it's my mission to make this world a better place via advertising and I really hope it's going to be yours as well. I started my crusade for pro-social advertising a few years ago when I discovered that the campaigns I've been working on for IKEA and many others became even more successful the moment we put societal impact over making money. And to release that power of pro-social advertising, I decided to give marketeers all over the world the proof that, that, that pro-social advertising not only benefits society, but also your business. So I conducted a large research um, and uh, together with, to add some legitimacy to it uh, with an Ivy League university and the United Nations. Um, and I found out that pro-social brands are so welcomed because people want to do more for others. It's a fundamental need. It even gives meaning to our lives. But in daily lives, it's pretty difficult to help others because you lack time, you lack energy, you lack ideas. Um, sometimes you even lack money. Uh, and this is exactly why pro-social brands are so welcomed. Because pro-social brands tackle societal issues, engage their target group as humans based on the core brand. And I've, I've seen amazing things happen with a great impact on society and business. Um, and from that moment on, I um, stopped dreaming about uh, the typical ad awards and uh, started dreaming about the, the next advertising award. Um, and I actually checked this with the Nobel organization and we are able to win a Nobel Prize. Um, and this is how I pitched it to creative peers all around the world. Do something remarkable, make this world a better place, win a Nobel Prize, and as a result, sell more. Um, I was able to uh, tour the world with, with the outcome of the research. The research grew into a best-selling book. Uh, it was big fun, toured the world for a year. Um, and in the meanwhile, we started um, doing brainstorming sessions for NGOs, for governments, and trying to find new angles to world problems. And um, we did this uh, for organizations like the UN uh, and up to the Dalai Lama, and it was really great. Um, but although we felt the power of creativity, I also felt something, difficult, something more difficult. These type of campaigns can be pretty stressful as well, and I get back to that at the end. Uh, of my presentation, the stress component of these types of campaigns. And to illustrate this, um, when we did this brainstorming session at the UN headquarters, we had a group from Pakistan entering our room, and they were desperately searching for a way to prevent militant rebels from killing their colleagues while vaccinating local communities. And there you are sitting with your sketch pad and your pro-social vision. It was mm, quite stressful. So. Um, uh, although I like those sessions and I like the, uh, uh, the research part, um, I felt that I had to set a more radical example. A radical example of how creativity can change the world. Um, and so I think it's now time to talk a little bit about Sweetie. I uh, hope to give you a few practical and conceptual learnings and maybe you can uh, use it in your own campaigns. Um, I will never claim that Sweetie was a product of superior intelligence or creativity. No, any one of you here could have produced or thought of the, the, the Sweetie case. Um, maybe there's a hammer missing in the toolbox of some modern creatives, um, and I will get to that at the end. 
Um, and I also won't subject you, oh, that's very important, I won't subject you to the horrible things we saw. Uh, so you don't have to lower your protective uh, gate yet. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Sweden. It all started um, two years ago when I read an article in a national newspaper where the director of Terre de Zom, and Terre de Zom is an anti-child exploitation organization, um, told the reporter that their shelters in the Philippines were flooded with children um, being victim of something I'd never heard about, never heard about. These children had to perform sexual acts in front of a webcam, and they were directed from men from, by men from other countries. Um, and uh, the director asked or called upon the readers to donate money, but I thought, Oof, if you imagine the size of uh, the sex tourism, the child sex tourism alone, imagine what could happen if there are no barriers left and people start abusing kids via the webcam in poor countries. So I called the director of Terre des Hommes and I said, um, should we do something about the demand side? There was no idea, there was no sweetie, there was nothing. Um, and he immediately said, yes, let's do. Um, so that moment, I thought, yeah, um, let's first find out whether the phenomenon is really there. And this is actual footage. Um, I won't show you the clip, but this is a picture of it. That night, I went online to see whether the phenomenon is really there. And within five minutes, I was chatting with an eight-year-old boy, and he was clearly not sitting there to discuss his progress in school with me. And he had the same age as my son, so it felt uh, poof. Um, and after we did a more thorough search, we found thousands of kids who had to do this. And from that moment on, we really were so committed to do something about this. And not a typical awareness campaign. No, we really wanted to bring a solution. I personally mm, don't like awareness campaigns, I like solutions uh, as a campaign. So we thought, oh yeah, okay, let's um, attack the financial system. Or let's stop predators um, from going online. But on second thought, we realized, ooh, this might shift the news topic to online privacy, and uh, it isn't a really viable solution. So we thought, if, you, if we really want to bring a solution to, the, to this problem, we need more understanding. And we spent months and months, still no sweetie, no nothing, only our search for uh, the solution. And we spent months and months uh, analyzing legal texts, talking to kids, talking to experts. Uh, and we found out that the problem was even bigger than we thought. At any, at any moment of the day, so now, there are 750,000 men with a sexual preference for children online. Every day, in the Philippines alone, tens of thousands of kids are being abused. Um, so we thought, oh, maybe the solution is that we have to promote a legal framework. Um, but the framework is already there. It's a crime. Um, and we were so happy when we finally found the solution. It sounds, maybe sounds a little simple, but uh, uh, we were extremely happy when we found out that um, although these, hap these crimes happen Every day, um, so far, only six men in the world have ever been convicted for this before Sweden. Only six men. And this is because of something very simple. You have to report the crime first before the police takes action. Um, and that works perfectly in countries like ours. You know, if my kid is being abused behind the webcam, I go to the police and they take action. This happens every day. No problem. But these kids in the Philippines can't go to the police because they are forced to sit behind the webcam. So the simple thing we wanted to promote is uh, let's shift our way of policing from a reactive style to a proactive style. We want you, police forces all over the world, to patrol the websites, to patrol the chat sites uh, where these crimes are happening. <sighs> and we were so happy that we had this solution. Um, but yeah. How are you going to put it on the agenda of politicians and police forces all over the world? Um, and that was the moment that we decided we need to show the world how big the problem is. Let's track down 1,000 predators, 1,000 of those men. Um, then we um, can also show the world how viable our solution is. If we as an NGO or an advertising agency can track down 
the ideas of IDs of 1,000 predators, police forces can track down hundreds of thousands easily. Um, so we set up a uh, covert operation. I rented a warehouse a few hundred meters from our agency. Uh, we had to fire a few lamsers. Um, and then uh, we went online via a non-traceable internet connection via Kyrgyzstan to Manila. So we were really sitting between the kids in Manila. Uh, I set up a fake agency in Switzerland to disguise the money trail, and then we went online. And the moment we went online with our fake idea, our, fi uh, our fake identity, men swarmed at us, but they all wanted us to turn on the webcam. Yeah, and then it was us. So um, that was the moment that we came up with the idea of Sweetie. And Sweetie is a computer-controlled 3D model. And I will show you uh, in a movie clip how she worked. Uh, but this is how we rebuilt our warehouse. It became a Filipino internet cafe where Sweetie is sitting. And one guy is operating the 3D model. The second lemser is chatting with the predator. And the third person is tracking him down. Uh, only with bits of information. We were not hacking the computer, which was quite simple in uh, many cases. We, we did not hack the computer, no. It was only by bits of information. And within 10 weeks, we identified 1,000 predators. The total idea, total, 1,000. And we had 20,000 20, men who were willing to pay for sex with Sweetie. In just 10 weeks, just one kid. So we were happy. Now we had this list of 1,000 predators, a viable solution. Hmm. But how are you going to make this world news? Uh, first we thought, and this was a fantasy by the way, we uh, asked uh, George Clooney or Oprah to present Sweetie to the world, but no one dared. It was way too dark. This topic is way too dark for celebrities. Um, yeah, but I wanted to make it world news. Uh, so I wanted to organize a press conference and we were so happy when we found out that, that we could let Sweetie do the talk, talking. We could l make her appear like a human being. Um, but then, how are you going to invite the press? And I think this was the most tricky, but also a very smart element of the campaign. And uh, here you see the proof that it actually worked. Uh, this was the first phone call I made to the German press agentur. Um, and what we did was uh, we invited the world press to The Hague, um, telling them that we were about to present the world's, or the world's largest sexual abuse case in history. And it was tricky because it wasn't a legal case yet. It was an advertising agency, an NGO. Um, but they all came. Um, and we made sure that we had predators from as many countries as possible, so we were also able to make headlines in almost every country, uh, which was um, great. So now you know the background of the story. Um, I'd like to show you now how it all came together in a short movie clip. Um, and after this movie clip, I will get back to you with a few uh, tips. Uh, let's see whether it works. There we go. My name is Sweetie. I'm 10 years old. I live in the Philippines. Every day, I have to sit in front of the webcam and talk to men, just like tens of thousands of other kids. The men ask me to take off my clothes. They undress. They play with themselves. They want me to play with myself. As soon as I go online, they come to me, 10, 100, every hour, so many. But what they don't know, I'm not real. I'm a computer model made piece by piece to track down these men who do this. 
Webcam child sex tourism is a new phenomenon that's spreading like an epidemic. Men from rich countries pay children in poor countries to perform sexual acts in front of webcams. These crimes happen tens of thousands of times each day. Terzom Netherlands is overwhelmed by child victims in the Philippines, so we approached them and offered our help. We started our own investigation, focusing on the demand side, and this is what we found. The UN and the FBI estimate that 750,000 pedophiles are online at any given moment. We estimate that tens of thousands of kids, some of them only six years old, are abused behind cams in the Philippines alone. But instead of hundreds of thousands of convictions, we could only find six men who have ever been charged. We found that webcam child sex tourism is a crime in almost every country. But laws are not enforced because child victims don't go to the police. Our solution? Proactive policing. To stop predators, we need to patrol the websites where they commit these crimes and catch them in the act. To show the world how this can be done, we went undercover posing as a 10-year-old Filipino girl on public chat rooms. The moment that you log in and you identify yourself as a young girl from the Philippines, they swarm at you. Do you like to wear your bra? Hello. Hi, honey. Can we talk? Hey, are you... I'm 36, okay? The predators feel safe and anonymous. They use fake names, live far away, and can pay with untraceable prepaid credit cards you can buy anywhere. All of the men wanted us to turn on our webcam, so to maintain our cover and to catch more predators, we brought Sweetie to life. Sweetie is a computer model we created to look and move like a real girl. We captured the movements of a real person and applied them to Sweetie. And then, we used an application to control her every move. I'm not real. Men think she's sitting in front of a webcam in the Philippines. But actually, we were operating her from a warehouse in the capital of the Netherlands, Amsterdam. While men chatted with Sweetie, we tracked them down. Using bits of information they gave us, we identified them with Google, Facebook, and other public sources. Without hacking their computers, we collected their names, addresses, phone numbers, pictures, and live video footage. In just 10 weeks, we identified 1,000 predators from 71 countries. If we can trace 1,000 men in 10 weeks, police forces can trace more than 100,000 a year. To raise global awareness and to pressure governments to act, we invited the world press to The Hague for one of the biggest child sex abuse cases in recent history. We showed our short film, and handed over the dossiers of the 1,000 predators to Interpol. Instantly, Sweetie became world news. This is CNN News. Webcam sex tourism. Terre des Hommes heeft duizend mannen van over de hele wereld betrapt. The names of 46 Australians have been handed to international police. Investigators tracked down their addresses and photos and handed them over to Interpol. She is the weapon against online sex tourism. Para ver a menores en situaciones sexuales. Increíble, no? Tens of thousands. Duizend mannen worden ontmaskt. For more details from Interpol. I'm of course very happy for Terre des Hommes that they have made this case. Terre des Hommes is in Lalu D. Virtual. Anjan Brahma Swiri. Terre des Hommes Internet. A sweet team is set up on this men. Two of them are Brazilian. For the pederastia in the whole world. Van Lien Tonki. This was the initiative of Holland. It's me, sweetie. Basta. For camera. I'm not real. I'm not real. The results. One billion people have seen the sweetie campaign. Webcam child sex tourism is now a globally recognized problem. And the Philippines National Police now consider it the country's number one crime. But what we're most proud of, predators are being stopped and children are being saved. The National Crime Agency said 17 people from Britain have been arrested in Operation Endeavour, which spanned 14 countries. There were 29 other arrests, including 11 people suspected of facilitating the abuse in the Philippines, where around 15 children aged 6 to 15 were rescued after being identified as victims. They're sitting at home tonight who think that they can go online and target these children. They can believe that they will be found. Great. and police forces all over the world are now taking over. Um, so every day new arrests are being made, not only from our list, but I can tell you that it's now on the agenda of police forces worldwide. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.
I only have two, two, I have two minutes. But, but thank you, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, that was the moment of the press conference. It was really great. But no one knew that we as an agency uh, were behind this campaign. No one knew. And we were in doubt to share it with the world because mm, maybe criminal gangs could be involved. Mm. Um, so for months we kept it silent. Uh, and then it all changed when we received a letter from the same UN, the United Nations, and they told us or asked us, why don't you share this example with your creative peers? Uh, because it's a great example of how the creative, creative industry can, can, can use their talent for good and have, uh, uh, have great impact. And um, so we did. Um, and although my colleagues already suffered from stress-related injuries, nothing happened to me so far. Um, but this is how I felt uh, the moment we released it uh, to the world. It felt that after those 1.5 years, all the stress had to be released. And um, I even had to go to the hospital to uh, have my heart checked. But it was all fine. It was just stress. Um, but then I remembered the, the session we had at U, the UN with the people from Pakistan. It was the same stressy feeling. Um, and then I thought, ooh, this could be my new project. Um, because creative people have the talent have, um, to yeah, solve real big problems. But because of that same creativity, we're also very sensitive. Um, and I think, and I'm uh, uh, researching this now, yeah, uh, whether this is true. Uh, our self-defense mechanism kicks in way earlier than uh, the self-defense mechanism of lawyers and doctors and other people. Just to protect ourselves. Uh, I hope you agree. Um, and so now I'd like to give you a few tips to stay creative uh, under fire. It's still work in progress, but I'd like to give you three tips. Um, and the first is from the Dalai Lama. Um, I got to ask him this uh, when we did this brainstorming session, and he was very practical. And he said, you can actually train yourself to absorb, absorb and release the horror if you embrace uh, sad stories for a fixed period and then let it go. So I'm now testing this. Every day I'm well, embracing sad stories from the newspaper for only 10 minutes and trying to find a solution and then let it go. And by doing this, I'm training my uh, on and off switch. Um, and I think it really works. The other thing is, start small. I started experimenting with pro-social campaigns a long time ago. Um, for example, inspired by the coffee example uh, a few minutes ago, by bringing my neighbors together to stimulate social cohesion. And uh, we started drinking coffee together. Um, and it worked fine. And this became the second largest holiday in the Netherlands called Neighbor Day. Uh, great news for the coffee brand, uh, but also for social, social cohesion. But please, start small. Uh, because if you don't, and we had a few burnout cases uh, at LIMS, if you don't start small, uh, you will feel lost um, very soon. And thirdly, um, especially to young creatives, I like to say, um, uh, trust your creativity. Uh, uh, because uh, especially with these types of, these types of these types of projects, you will hear a lot of no's. I, I get no's every week. No, uh, that's not a good idea. So um, please keep trusting your creativity, and we'll be all fine. So to close down the presentation, two, uh, two things. We brought Sweetie. Um, on the balcony level outside, we have um, a computer so you control the Sweetie software for a moment. We won't chat, but you can feel how it works. And I brought um, the research um, with me, uh, the book. So maybe you can use it to uh, confuse or convince uh, a client into a pro-social pro route. Um, yeah, my friends, uh, we live in interesting times. But you have the sacred gift of creativity. And um, I hope you're going to use it, because it will be a huge win for you as a person. It will be fun, by the way. Um, it will be a big win for, pro -so for your brands. And it will be a big win for the world. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.